Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we're going to do a fast and loose um, tonalist watercolor landscape painting. I have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua. I just saturated it with water. Um, I, I either had some uh, paint on the brush or something on the edge of my water container, so the wash was a little dirty, but I'm really not too worried about that. And we're going to mainly focus on earth tones, and from there, just to see what happens. So, I'm going to use my raw sienna to map things out. I'm playing with the fast and loose tonalist application. I always um, reference Dennis Sheehan, Stuart Davies, uh, modern tonalist oil painters. And I don't have anything really in mind. It's kind of just letting things paint and happen. But a part of me wants to explore uh, just a more silhouette aspect against a skyline. So either sit back and enjoy or grab a brush and feel free to uh, paint along. I'm using the medium Ron Ranson Hake brush. Here's some burnt umber, just mapping out ideas, kind of want to explore that traditional tree motif, you know, put a few aspects in there, and have our background, probably switch to um, some raw umber. I do like the light washes of raw umber and the way it recedes. Then I may introduce the phthalo blue as a just a variant, just a way to get darks, um, a little bit of greenish aspects. We'll see what happens. So I use the binder clips. Um, it's clipped to just a thin board. Um, I bought the large piece of wood years ago from um, from Lowe's and just had them cut it down to various sizes. And I just use the binder clips to clip it on. It's just a lot easier than taping down a painting. And with taping down, I've always had the issue of the paper wanting to buckle, but then it won't buckle where it's uh, taped down and then just caused a back and forth issue. Some raw sienna in the sky. I could use ultramarine to get grays instead of the phthalo blue. I don't know if I want to do that. Maybe I could use a little bit of both. Let's just expand this palette. Here's a little bit of ultramarine. For me, uh, ultramarine with the earth tones pushes gray. Really not sure why. Just letting it get creative. And it's non-staining, so, and it can add some interesting uh, textures, especially if you're looking for granulation. Yeah, so this will be one of the most expanded palettes I've played with in quite a while. For me, just the less colors, the better, the more harmonious it usually is. But um, I've been doing the oil painting and exploring 
the fluid watercolor paper for potential plein air painting. So I'm dipping back into my normal uh, painting routine. I even put out some fresh light red oxide, which I love mixing with ultramarine for a distant purple. I just don't want to be to, to break up the harmo uh, the harmony. You can just go back and forth with the paper towel and the hake, adding and subtracting, just re-wetting, re, um, re-drying. Let's see. I never really did raw umber with ultramarine. I do have the other stuff on the brush. I'm not cleaning the brush at all. But I'm curious. And that'll start looking. I'm always concerned about getting a uh, Fruity Pebble-esque cereal color. This does give an interesting purple though. A light red oxide ultramarine, then the raw umber. I have too much light red oxide on the brush. Now it's on the uh, warmer browner side of things. Letting my tree get mapped out. It's wet and wet in these areas, so I'm just kind of dabbing it and let it diffuse. Now that we're really on the brown side of things, I think I want to introduce the halo blue. using a little bit of fingernail scraping. I think I'll grab the number one rigger. And play wet and wet with that. It'll diffuse. I'll get some ideas in place. And the ultimate goal of just a sense of depth over these spots. And for a stronger mix. stronger mix on top kind of offset just to create that depth
snow. Um, Monday, I'm mailing a friend some nine by, sorry, five by seven uh, little etchings that I did that are matted. And I would like to start um, offering the five by sevens either an oil or a matted watercolor on Etsy or you know, for sale on other sites. They seem to fit perfect in a uh, UPS, uh, just the priority small box. I'm kind of testing out that mailing just to see how it gets handled, and if there's any issues, and the weight, etc. If anything gets bent or whatnot. But I think it'll be successful. So I'm excited about that. So if you ever want to support this channel, I have a whole bunch of links down below where you can check out the Patreon where I have exclusive videos. And thank you so much everybody that supports through the Patreon. That really helps out a lot. And you also have the Ko-Fi and other ways you can donate. And of course, if you ever want to buy anything. And so we got a lot of depth going on here. I do feel like I could have played by better rules with these trees, um, with warm and cool colors to get a better sense of layering. We'll see how it dries overall. Let's scrape a little bit. This is just a cut up credit card and my scrapes for the foreground lately have been this kind of wider part and moving the puddle to the bottom part so it just naturally grounds these shapes that are being scra uh, scraped in so we have the lighter part and the darker part so just like an easy technique to achieve that I do paint on a flat surface that probably at a one degree angle or something like that towards me but for the most part nothing really flows down there are a lot of people that paint wet and wet on upright surfaces and they get a very interesting technique that happens with that uh, people such as Joe Menza and uh, Stephen Cronin they have tons of videos on YouTube where you can see that upright uh, painting application. I think I'm very wet right here, so I'm still trying to pull back, but I can't. So I could at least use it to pull some darker marks. I'm not sure if David the Usher paints flat. I think Alan Owen's on an angle too. I think for the most part, a lot of the fast and loose painters are on an upright angle. I have to ask them why they prefer that because I, I I think I told you guys right off the bat why I prefer the flat but, and also it's just easier for me to film painted font but that you get that drip in the middle with the wet and wet and they're not in the wet and wet phase as long as I am I'm wanting to push back to a waterway right here. With these tools, you can really go back and forth and develop things. And I know I want to build up my my silhouette and my darker values here. That'll probably happen in the, the dry off stage, in the dry stage. See if we can pull out any 
highlights. Most important thing is just to practice and play around. Um, I think actually recently Joe found a set of cotton paints uh, tubes, the smaller tubes, but for $35. They might have been on sale. Between that, a pad of paper, and then you get yourself a brush or two and a palette. You'd be painting for uh, pretty cheap starting off. It's always the initial investment that makes I think a uh, hobby seem unattainable or you know, questionable if you want to get into it or not. I'm, you know, fortunate enough. I'm a school teacher, so there's obviously a lot of stability with, with teaching. And um, people enjoy watching these apparently, and they support through the Patreon, like I mentioned. So, you know, that really helps. Uh, allow me to explore outside the realm of just basic materials. So I really appreciate that. All right, let's see. How do I want to push to a darker part? Um, I'm going to stop for a moment and I'm not going to do my dry off yet. I just want to kind of think out loud. I want darker um, silhouettes. I want to really darken these things. I am obviously using watercolor, which has you know issues with getting that dark tonal value. Um, of course, oils and gouache, acrylics are probably the easier way to get that. However. It has to be attainable with watercolor. It's probably just me having been absent from just this pure painting in a while. So I could rely on the lamp black or the, um, the black gouache. But I think what we'll do is we'll do a dry off. We'll see how things look. And then from there, uh, play with some mixes. All right, so I did the dry off, and you can see things lightened up a little bit. It's still a little cool to the touch. Um, what happens is the water's being removed. Uh, think of concrete or asphalt and how dark it looks whenever it's wet and how it's lighter whenever it dries. So it's the removal of the water um, that's causing a shifting in the light. Um, Handprint.com will talk about the... Uh, What's it called? The, the degrees that it shifts and how the darker colors are notorious for just such large shifts. Uh, we work incredibly wet and wet whenever we were painting, so that's one of the issues. So that's just something to keep in mind, but it really creates just a great effect uh, with the wet and wet. Now, during the dry off, I was looking at it and I was looking at this tree. And I was thinking where I could accentuate this tree or I could put another layer in front and create another tree in front. Um, that being said, I don't know if I want to hide that tree. So I want to offset here. I think that's where I'm going to go. Yeah. What's up, principal? What you want? I'll play with you in a bit. He's like, I just want food. All right, so this is the number four rigger. I will reach for it since it holds um, a lot more than the number one. And it just makes things faster for me. So it's just an act of convenience. You can get very expressive marker making with it. Just like the number one. The brand is uh, Silver Black Velvet, but I think there's just a few synthetic um, squirrel brands on the market that are relatively similar. I think I compared some in the past. I think it might have been Mimic that I compared it to. 
I, I filmed a lot of videos on <laughs> YouTube at this point. I am mixing my raw umber with my phthalo blue. Just uh, looking for those darks. And think about how I want to put in the foliage. It's just a side swipe. Alan Owen does this side dry brush effect very, very well. Um, so does David Usher. And when they do it, it looks deceptively easy. I think I should switch up the directions of it. And since I'm trying to achieve just a dark value, um, I do recall reading in like my initial delve into watercolors that some people had felt that there was no difference between layering watercolors and just putting in a heavy application in the beginning to achieve that. I think I'm going to grab some lamp black. That's probably going to wind up happening. Because I want a variety in the dark. I'm trying not to block out that background tree, which unfortunately like I'm doing. And the goal is just using this little approach get this part to pop forward. Just little tricks to achieve depth. Um, one thing, and I'm not sure if it was Burge Harrison or Carlson, who it's probably Carlson, probably or maybe they both wrote about it. Yeah, like the way light interacts on the edges of things and how thinner shapes, like thinner tree branches, will not be dark as the trunk because of a enveloping that takes place with the light around it. So. Not super dark. And someone on uh, Ron Rats and Disciple page recently uh, quoted Mr. Ron Ranson from a book saying how nothing in the sky should be darker than anything on the land, which is essentially uh, Carlson's theory of angles. So that means that Ron Ranson read his 
Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting in 1920. I'm curious if you just heard that from someone else or, you know, just observed it himself. Uh, the number one rigger, just really great for thin lines, but you see that I have to keep on going to uh, replenish it quite a bit. If this was matted, it would come to about here, the mat, but I like painting to the edges. It just helps me feel like I'm cleaning the scene. I'm going to pause the camera for a dry off and I'm going to put out some lamp black. All right, did a quick dry off, put out some fresh from the tube burnt umber and some lamp black. I am going to create another tree element right here and bring this one closer in the picture plane. So we did a lot in the wet and wet and we did our dry off. And now we're, then we painted around in that. Now we're looking to really just push the envelope and see what happens. You also need to see how this dries. Sometimes I'll play around with um, the white wash, the black wash, and maybe like a red, light red oxide or a burnt sienna. But that, to me, I always kind of overdo the black and the white. Kind of going for the the Conte trois, trois crayon palette. Whenever I explore that. But anyway, so this is the lamp black. Like I said, mixed with our umber. Straight from the tube, so I'm laying it on thick. Setting a fun foreground. Um, number one. I do like how dark it applies. I really hope we'll stay in the darker application, darker tonal value. It's almost a little too on top of that most recent tree. But it might actually add a good effect um, one of the things, the gentleman that, that wrote the books that I had mentioned, they would talk a lot about 
the eye focusing on one point and um, diffusing the rest of the scene within tonalism and you know, having that blur, the lost and found edges and things like that, probably help those techniques, it, or essentially they do. I just like the brush up and brush down. David Usher, that's where I saw that. All right, let's pause it and do a dry off. I think you know, we're at the 30 minute mark. I think I'm gonna leave it here. It is approaching what I had said that was kind of in my mind with the a uh, darker silhouette of the trees against the lighter background with just the common motif that you'll see in uh, tonalist uh, paintings. Uh, in fact, quite a few people have been posting them recently on different tonalist uh, geared Facebook pages or on Instagram. Um, and those are usually done in oils and there's usually a very warm uh, red or orange in this region. That's something I've been struggling with figuring out how to apply with the watercolors. But that'll be for another day. I think we're headed in an interesting direction, um, especially with this re um, dip back into these kind of full-size watercolors and just the fast and loose and not really looking at plain air. So I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, follow. And uh, I'll talk to you all soon. Have a great day.